Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to the Performing Arts Series, brought to you by the Kennedy Center and Prince William Network. My name is Regina Carter, and the tune you just heard was by the late, great Milt Jackson, entitled For Someone I Love. This group has been together, most of us have been together for about eight years, and uh, the music we play is called jazz. But we incorporate a lot of different styles from around the world, and some of the people in the band are from different parts of the country in, as well. And uh, so we incorporate all those styles into the music. Can someone tell me the one characteristic that makes jazz different from any other music? Improvisation, thank you. Improvisation is making up a tune on the spot with harmonies that are already existing underneath. Before we get into that, I'd like to take this time to introduce my band to you. On piano, he has two CDs out. The newest one is entitled A New Day from Munich, Germany. Please welcome Mr. Vanna Gierig. <laughs> On bass, he also has two CDs out, the latest one being entitled Big Mouth. Please welcome from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, Mr. Chris Lightcap. On drums, he's played with some of the greatest musicians, Abby Lincoln, Betty Carter, James Carter, Cyrus Chestnut, and a whole list of others. And now we're happy to have him. Please welcome Mr. Alvester Garnett. <laughs> and on percussion, she's played with Carmen Lundy, John Lucien, Wayne Shorter, and a whole list of others. From Cuba, please welcome Miss Mayra Casales. So we'd like to get back to improvisation. There are harmonies that are already existing, so we play the melody to a tune down one time, and then we make up our own melodies on, that exi on those existing harmonies. And when we're finished with our improvisation, we pass it on to the next person who's gonna take a solo. And the way they know that we're done is usually by eye, eye contact, but also it's like when you finish a sentence. You don't finish a sentence in the middle of it. You finish it and your voice goes down or goes up, and so you know it's the next person's turn. And we know what to play because it's a language. Just like you learned how to speak English by imitating your parents, and then you learn to put words together and form your own sentences. It's the same way we learn this language. We're gonna take this time to play a tune to give you an example. This is a tune I know all of you know. We're gonna play the melody down one time, and then I'm gonna improvise over, that, over those harmonies. So here we go. on that second head. So another way that we learn how to improvise or how to learn the language is call and response, where I play something and you all are gonna sing it back, okay? So let's just check it out. Let's try it really fast. I need you all to sing out really loud and clearly, okay, so we can hear you. So I'm gonna do something like this and you repeat it when I point to you. I can't hear you, you gotta do better than that, okay? Oh man, the kids that are watching on TV are gonna say you all are lame, come on. <laughs> But sing the note that I play, please. Let's try. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to try it over the harmonies of Old McDonald. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three.
very, very good. <laughs> so now we're going to pass it. I'm going to pass it around the band, and each person is going to talk about their function in a jazz quintet. I'm going to pass it to my bassist, Chris Lightcap. Thank you very much. This, is, this instrument's called a bass. It's also called a double bass, a contra bass, string bass. got many names. All the same instrument. And um, in jazz, as in most forms of music, the primary role of the bass is to provide harm, a harmonic and uh, rhythmic foundation for the music. And um, so traditionally, it's got a supportive role. But in jazz, I'm constantly improvising. If, even if I'm supporting the other musicians in the band, I'm improvising with them. So. And the tune that we played at the, at the very beginning of the, of the set, that was a, a Cuban song. And um, in that form of music, the bass plays a pattern based off what the congas are playing called a tumbao. But traditionally in jazz, um, we play a, a form of music known as swing or bebop. The mo that's the most commonly form heard of uh, music in jazz. And in that music, the bass plays what's called a walking bass line, which is what I was playing on the last song. And as long as the bass is dealing with the harmonic foundation, the form of the tune, as uh, we played for Old MacDonald just now, I can pretty much choose whatever notes I want. And then I can also improvise other rhythmic things to go along with it. I don't have to keep on playing those straight quarter notes. And then, plus, I get to solo and play melodies when I want to, when it's my turn. So. A lot of times people think of the bass as being a, a background instrument, but it actually, in jazz, it has a very interactive support um, role that forms kind of a dialogue or a counterpoint to what the other musicians are playing. So I'm going to play some examples of some walking bass, and then I'll show you some of the things that I can do to vary that, and then I'll play uh, some, something that would be a good example of what I might play when it's my turn to solo, along with Alvester, our drummer. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to pass it over to our drummer, Alvester Garnett, and he's going to talk about his instrument, the drum set. Okay. This instrument goes by several different names. Sometimes it's called the drum set, <coughs> the drum kit, or the trap set or trap kit. This instrument is an American invention. The individual instruments, the cymbals, for example, which are these, the toms, the bass drum, snare drum, they all have their origins in different countries. but the assembly, the collection of these instruments as played by one person is something that started here in America. Now, my main role is to play time. Um, if you want to look at us as being like a car, as, as this band is being a car, he's the tires, I'm the engine. I make sure everything is turning along at the right speed. Okay? Now, unlike pop music, I'm not limited to just playing a simple beat like... That's how I first learned to play, and I got bored with it, so I, I eventually evolved to this. And we have a pattern in jazz on the cymbal. We call it the swing beat. Underneath of it, I put a bass drum pattern, and all it is is called four on the floor, and it's just four quarter notes put up to the bar. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Then behind it all, I can put two and four on the hi-hat. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this is where it gets complicated and fun for me. In my left hand, I can choose different accents, different rhythms to keep the music moving along, to accompany what the soloist is doing, to comment, to a comment on what they're doing even. And it sounds like this. And with the bass, it sounds like this.
That's my role. We'd like to play a tune now that was written by a great saxophonist from my hometown, Detroit, Michigan. His name is Lucky Thompson, and this tune is called Prelude. And we're going to play the melody down once, and in jazz terminology, we say the head. So I'm going to play the head down one time, then I'm going to take two courses, which means I'm going to make up two of my own melodies, then I'm going to pass it to the pianist. He's going to take two, pass it to the bass, he'll take two, and then Alvester and I are going to have a conversation for a chorus. And then he's, which we call trades, then he's going to take two courses and then the head out. So this is Prelude. Thank you very much. Prelude by Lucky Thompson. I'm going to pass it over to my pianist, Vanna, now, and he's going to talk about his role. Hello. Uh, the role of the piano is primarily to give all the harmony to the music that you're hearing. Um, as Chris was talking about basically giving the foundation to the harmony, which is the root uh, on the bottom, I, gotta play, I have to play all the rest of the notes within the chords. So when I'm playing by myself, the beauty of the piano is that I can take any role. It's kind of a little orchestra in itself. I can play up here, play string parts, or I can play um, pretty much any combination of parts. But when I play by myself in jazz um, and I don't have a band, I will probably have to play some of the notes that Chris would usually play on the bass. And then in my right hand, I'll play the rest of the notes of the harmony, uh, which sounds something like this.
So that's something like, if I were playing by myself, thank you. Um, however, the beauty of this quintet is that we do have different musicians and we do have the bass. And so that frees me up a little bit. What I can do now is I can what the, do what the right hand did in my left hand. And then it frees up my right hand to make the harmonies even thicker, add more notes to it. Or I can play uh, some melody notes, I can play something else, um, to some accents or, like I said, melodies on top of my left hand chords. So that sounds something like that, like this. The left hand is playing the harmony, and the right hand makes it thicker. Or the left hand plays the harmony, and the right hand plays the melody. That's kind of having fun with the harmony. Um, however, harmony does not only have to be played by playing all the notes at the same time, as I was doing, hitting them all at the same time. I could also break them up, and different styles of music will play harmonies in a different way. If you go back to classical music, a lot of times you hear something like... That's the harmony still in the left hand, but it's broken up. So that's still the harmony of the song. Then uh, in the first song that you heard us play today, uh, For Someone I Love, um, it's a Latin song. It's based on Afro-Cuban rhythms. In that kind of music, I can break up the harmony in even another way, which is called a montuno. And it's a more rhythmic way of breaking up the harmony, which sounds something like this. These are the harmonies, but I break them up. And um, that's pretty much the most important thing about the piano. Uh, we're going to play now a song that I wrote called Gachinha Sabijinha, and that's yet another way to play harmonies. Um, it's based on a Brazilian uh, tradition of uh, acoustic guitar players who um, I kind of simulate that in my left hand between the pinky and the rest of my fingers, something like. It frees up my right hand still to play some melodies. So we're going to play a song that's based off of that. Okay, thanks.
Thank you. Cachinha Sabechinha, which is Portuguese for Wise Little Cat, written by Ivana Gerig. I'd like to pass it on to my percussionist, Mayra, now. Hello. My function is to uh, keep the beat and uh, never get in Alvester's way, kind of fill in the holes and accents and um, play along with, with the melodies also. I'm going to demonstrate the congas first. It's an Afro-Cuban drum. It has a low drum and a high drum. And uh, I'll demonstrate an um, Afro-Cuban beat rhythm or whatever it called the guawanco and it goes like this those are the congas thank you these are the timbales or called pailas in cuba it, they also have a low drum and a high drum You can play uh, like I did in the first song, the dan song on the, on the heads, but you can also play the sides of this drum. And you also have bells. And a typical um, Cuban beat you would play on the timbales would be something like this. Those are the timbales. I also have some hand percussion. This instrument is called the shek, it is from Africa. It's made out of a gourd, which is emptied out, seeds are emptied out, and then it's strung with beads to make the shaking sound, but it's got a, a really nice bottom to it also. And it sounds something like this. That's to shake it in. This instrument that I played before on Vanna's song is called the cuica. And it's, a, uh, it's got a head that has a stick attached to it inside. And you rub it up and down with a wet rag or a sponge. And you hold in the head and out when you want it high or low pitch. And it goes something like this. I also have this uh, instrument carved by the uh, Indians in New Mexico. It's called the uh, frog, and it sounds like a frog. It's carved out of wood, and you rub up the stick up, up the back. Oops. That's the frog. And I have some... Uh, some instruments that are just off of trees and stuff, like these pea pods. Different pitches. <laughs> and an assortment of uh, percussion instruments, chimes that are made out of um, metal, different sizes, and they chime. And this beautiful instrument here is the djembe. It's really cool because it has as opposed to having to use two different drums with the low and the high, it all has it right within the drum. The low is in the middle and the high on the edge. And we're going to uh, play a song called Mandingo Street, written by Richard Bono, and we'll demonstrate this drum for you.
Thank you very much. Mandingo Street by Richard Bona. Now I'd like to talk about my instrument in the role of a jazz band. People aren't used to seeing violin in a jazz group. They're used to usually seeing trumpets or saxophones or vocalists. But back in the 1920s and 30s, violin was a very important part of the big band era. Um, I think when we moved more into the bebop era, you saw less violin players in this idiom. Uh, but the great thing about this instrument is that you find this instrument or, s or instruments that are very similar to it in every type of music across the, the whole world. Uh, whether it be Middle Eastern music, or whether it be music from uh, Ireland, jazz, cl European classical. And I started out playing European classical music and I was turned on to jazz, which is America's classical music, when I was in high school. And I was really attracted to the music because I wanted to be able to improvise and come up with my own melody and play the tune the way I want to play it, not necessarily the way that Beethoven wrote it or Mozart wrote it. I wanted to play, have my own voice. But um, I started off playing, we use a lot of vibrato and a lot of bow, like playing. <laughs> But I had to change that way, thank you. I had to change that way of playing when I wanted to play jazz, because jazz, you have to use less bow, less vibrato, and after have to swing. If I take a tune like Lady Be Good, if I play it like in European classical style, it would sound really corny, and the drummer or somebody would probably throw something at me, but it'd be. <laughs> It's really corny, so we have to swing. So you just have to really learn the language. Um, there are a lot of great things you can do with this instrument. I like to explore it without using any kind of electronics. I can sound like a Japanese koro. Or I can use the back of the bow, play with the wood, which is called coleño, to play like a percussion instrument. Or I can play, <laughs> thank you. I can play pizzicato, which is playing with my finger like the bass player usually does. So I can comp, which means play accompaniment for someone else. Like if the piano player is taking a solo or the bass player, I can play for him. I can Or I can play like harmonics. Or in between like Middle Eastern. So there are a lot of things you can do with this instrument and with all of these instruments. And we all like to interchange what role we play in this band. So it makes it more interesting for us. Um, I'm going to demonstrate my instrument and some of the styles I grew up with, like Motown and some other stuff, by playing an excerpt from a tune I wrote that was commissioned by the Kennedy Center entitled Alexandra. But before we go to that tune, um, I would like, like to now invite the viewers to call in your questions. Uh, the phone number is 1-800-672-0067. Please, we want to hear from you. So next we're going to do Alexandra.
Thank you very much, Alexandra. We'd like to take this time to answer some of your questions. We have a caller from Los Angeles, California. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, hi, I'm a teacher in Los Angeles at a Torrance High School. I'd like to ask you how, after many years of your, each of you sound like you've been all classically trained, you acquired a taste for jazz. Uh, I think my, I came to it by hearing another violinist, uh, two others, Jean-Luc Ponty and Stefan Grappelli, and I was really attracted to the music, and uh, that, that's how I came into this music. Uh, anyone else want to answer that? For me, it was like, I, I liked jazz first when I was a kid already, but everybody uh, in Germany told me, no, you got to learn classical first, so I had to go back to classical, and then, so I was basically classically trained and then went back to jazz, or did both at the same time? I actually bounced all around. I started off playing violin, and um, then I got into rock music, and I was playing electric bass, and then I got into the upright bass and started playing classical music, and then I got into jazz after that, so I kept on going back and forth. We have a question from our audience here. Hi, where has the quintet performed? Uh, let's see, we've been to Israel. Germany, all over Europe, uh, Cuba, Brazil. anyone think of anywhere else? Brazil, uh, Brazil, Brazil. France, France, Spain, Italy, Portugal, Portugal. Portugal. Greece. Uh, Greece, here the United States. <laughs> we have another, another question from our audience. Hello, um, how did you find the members of the quintet? In the unemployment line, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, uh, I, I had a band together, I had an electric band, and we used to do more funk-oriented stuff, and I needed a piano player because my pianist couldn't make it, and she recommended Vana on piano, and uh, I kept him after that. He was such a great player, such a great person. The bassist, I held auditions, everyone agreed that he should be with us. The drummer came recommended by another great drummer named Louis Nash, who's played with everyone, and he, was, he fit in great with us. And Miter, I had known from playing with Carmen Lundy, and she was such a great... Um, percussionist and everyone really gets along well and we spend so much of our time on the road together it's really important that we not only they all be great musicians but that everyone gets along really well so uh, we have a caller from Philadelphia go ahead caller yeah hi. I was uh, I was just wondering exactly where I can pick up some of your materials I mean do you guys have any albums out in, in stores or I was just flipping through and tell you guys you, you mesh incredibly you guys are you guys are absolutely phenomenal <laughs> Thank you very much. We all have CDs under our own name, but we as a group have a brand new CD coming out April 22nd entitled Paganini After a Dream. Um, and we named it that because I was the first non-classical musician to be given the honor to play on the violin that was owned and played by the Baroque violinist Paganini. But we made um, a jazz record, but using a lot of the music from the French Impressionist era. So it's called Paganini After a Dream, April 22nd. But we have other CDs out. If you look under my name or any names of the group here, you'll find CDs in the bins under their name as well. Thank you. We have a question, a call from Missouri. Go ahead, caller. Hi. I was want to first of all say that you guys are great. Thank you. This is a great way to eat my cereal this morning. Um, I wanted to know, since music is the um, universal language and you can talk in every, every vernacular, what challenges do you still come across and how do you overcome them, overcome them as a group? Uh, you want to answer that, Alvesta? Uh, so some of the challenges that we come across musically? Yeah, well, <clears throat> some... Some of the musical challenges, like for me, example, when I came into this band, I didn't play a lot of Latin music, and that was something that was needed. And uh, her manager called me up and said, do you play a lot of Latin music? I said, yeah, I do. I lied. And <laughs> <laughs> but I learned really fast. I learned, I learned really fast. Myra here is from Cuba. I learned a lot from her. We all come from different backgrounds. Vaughn is from Germany. Um, I'm from Virginia. And uh, Chris is from... Um, from from Latrobe, <laughs> Pennsylvania. And so we all come from different musical backgrounds and we've all learned things from one another. Vana loves Brazilian music. Vana loves, I mean, I mean, Myra loves Cuban music. I like swing. And we all put our music together and we work together and each of us has their strengths and our weaknesses and we work with that. We lift each other up. We show each other different things. We have a caller from New Orleans. Go ahead, caller. New Orleans, you there? I guess we have a... We have a question in our audience. Hi. Why does the percussionist use keys? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it started because um, 
everybody forgot to hand in their keys after our tours and through hotels with a band I played a long time ago. And so the, I uh, asked them to give them to me and I started collecting them. And then I, a friend of mine came up with the idea of um, stringing them together, so we did. And they really work because they don't, normally chimes when you hit them, they ring for a long, long time and you have to bend over and stop, you know, just stop them before it goes into the next segment of the song. But the keys stop ringing right away, at least shorter than the chimes. So they work and they have a different sound and it's another, another texture. New Orleans, are you on the phone? Go yeah, ahead. I'm here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> How you doing? I'm fine. How uh, are my you? My name's Nicole. I just was introduced not too long ago to your music from a friend named Trishelle. And when I saw you, I was like, she sounds so familiar. And I just listened. I said, I heard her before. And I was like, oh, this is so great. I can call and talk to her. I just want to know what gave you the motivation to just keep going forward. And like, I'm going to start a band. Because I'm so in, in love with music. I don't know what to do. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, what keeps me motivated? Uh, these guys, having them around, they keep me motivated. Because no matter what job you do, um, there's sometimes where you get really tired of doing it. Um, but you have to be inspired either by each other or outside forces. And I learned a very important lesson this year. Sometimes you have to take a break and get away from it so you can appreciate it. But uh, just if you really love and have the passion for it, uh, just keep doing it. We have a question from our audience. What style of music have each of the members of the group studied? Uh, well, I think we've all studied European classical music. We've all been studying jazz. Uh, I've studied Afro-Cuban music as well. Uh, anyone else want to jump in quickly? Say what they've studied, style, I mean, in, in, I went to college, so in college I studied mostly jazz and, and composition uh, based on jazz because I didn't want to study any more classical that I felt like I needed to you know, learn more in, about composition and jazz harmony. I think we're all checking out, constantly checking out new forms of music from around the world, and we might necessar not necessarily study it formally, but we're always checking out, you know, recordings of things like a lot of African music and, um, you know, different singers and songwriters. Yeah, I started out actually watching MTV. I figured out how to play the drums from watching MTV because it's part of the um, aspect of learning this instrument is seeing it. So I started with rock and roll, then I graduated into to fusion, then to jazz and classical in college. But uh, my love remains here. But I check out African music, different, all kinds of different styles because it, jazz is, a, is really the first fusion music. It's a fusion of all different styles. We have another question from our audience. All right, um, how often do you compose music for the quintet? Hmm, not very often. Maybe when it's time for a uh, new CD to come out, maybe I'll compose a tune or if I'm commissioned by an organization. But actually, everyone composes, and they might come up with a tune and say, you know what, can we play this tune with the band? Uh, and Van actually has been commissioned to write a tune specifically for this band, right? Um, so he'll be, he'll be starting to work on that. So. Um, I think we spend so much of our time on the road, at least eight months out of the year, that sometimes it's very difficult to sit at home and compose. Another question from our audience? What is the attachment on your violin? This is a microphone, and um, I just screw it onto the side of the violin and aim it. These two, F -hole, these two holes that look like S's, they're called F holes. That's where the sound comes from. Then when I'm done, I can unscrew it and take it off, and it doesn't alter the sound of the instrument. Another question from our audience. How do you create the harmonics on your violin? Um, you, have, you put one finger, if they're false harmonics, you put one finger down lightly and the fourth fingers, one, the first finger heavy, fourth finger light, and the bow light and just. Or I can just run my finger lightly over the strings. Another question from our audience. This question is for Myra. What made you decide to become a percussionist? Well, um, my brothers both play percussion. My mom used to sing and my dad played guitar. So we kind of uh, fell into it just being the percussion section for them at the, the gatherings. Not really professional, but way back in Cuba. And uh, when we moved to the United States, uh, we continued to pursue. My brother started playing trap drums. My other brother uh, picked up percussion. and. Uh, we all just started playing at home and learning with each other and from, uh, from uh, private teachers. And we got into it and pursued it on further. 
Well, we've run out of time, but I would uh, like to thank the students in the auditorium for being with us and being such a great audience. I would especially like to thank the viewing audience from across the country for tuning in to be with the program. If you didn't get a chance to ask a question today, you may contact the performers by using the email address on the screen. We'd love to hear from you and answer your questions. We'd also like to, to invite you to visit the Kennedy Center website at the addresses on the screen. There you will find additional information about this program and the Kennedy Center's upcoming programs, as well as other resources on integrating the arts into the curriculum. We would also like to hear what you think of the Kennedy Center Performing Arts Series, so we are asking you to complete an electronic evaluation form at the address on your screen. This will help us to select topics and resources you need to enhance your classroom experience. Please remember our next Kennedy Center program will be on Wednesday, April 30th from 11 to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time when members of the Royal Shakespeare Company will discuss the play as you like it. Thank you for being in with us today. And now as you leave, we would like to perform Central Habana by Oriente Lopez. Thanks so much. <laughs>